Okay, you guys, hello. I wish today was a day where we were actually together instead of uh, working on your own, but you are going to work today with 5.4 accessor methods. And so just to kind of review a little bit, remember we have methods that we can work with in a class. We have accessor methods, and then we have mutator methods. Accessor methods are the ones that we call the getters. Mutator methods are the ones that we call the modifier methods or the setters. So when we're dealing with accessor methods, they typically have the name of get and the action listed in the name of the method. This is where we can pull information um, from a class. And uh, we've seen them before. This is gonna get a little bit more into it. Um, I am going to have you watch the AP video, the daily video that's provided by the College Board. It's still the same teacher of the videos that we watched earlier in the week, but I want to make sure you have a good um, idea of this because, again, we're not live, so I can't answer questions for you right now. You're just stuck watching my video. So let's take a peek at what she has to say. Well, the purpose of Accessor Methods is to allow safe access to instance variables. So remember, our instance variables are private, and we don't want people to just be able to get them without being careful. So this means that we can only use a specific accessor method to, act, to actually gain the value of any of our instance variables. Sometimes you'll hear these referred to as get methods. You might even heard them referred to as getters. Whenever there is a need for a different class to access the instance variables, accessor methods are necessary. You may or may not have really seen how important they are yet, but I will tell you, in units 6, 7, and 8, when you start studying arrays, array lists, and 2D arrays, you're probably going to find that you use these very often. So let's look at an example. Now, maybe you might have looked at topic 5.1 video 1, and we looked at the anatomy of a class. So here's part of that class. We had the class snack. We started out with private instance variables, and then we added a default constructor and an overloaded constructor. Notice there are two private instance variables, so I am adding an accessor method for each one of those variables. So let's take a look at how those are written. You can see the headers. We'll look at those in a little more detail in a moment, but notice we are returning name. Name is actually the private instance variable up here. So we're returning a copy of that string. We're returning a copy of the calories. We are returning the values so they can be used. So what do we need to know about those headers? Well, accessor methods must be public. Otherwise, they're kind of useless since the whole idea is to provide accessibility to the private instance variables. The return type must match the type of the instance variable to be accessed. The name of the accessor method is often something like get and then the name of the variable. It doesn't have to be, but that's a fairly common standard. You should not have parameters in accessor methods. So if we look at the two accessor method headers from the snack class, we can see that these were met. They both start with public, they are public visibility. Get name was returning name, which was a string, so the return type is string. Get calories was returning calories, which was an int, so our return type is int. And we did use that kind of naming convention, get name and get calories. Notice no parameters. So why don't you practice? I've set up a basic class for pet with three private instance variables. I'd like you to try to write accessor methods for all the instance variables. Pause your video, take a moment, and see if you can write those methods. All right, hopefully you took a little time to do that. Let's look at the first one. Public string get name. So my first private instance variable is a name, which is a string. So I return a string, I called it get name, and I'm just returning that value. Then I have type of pet. Again, it's a string, so I'm going to do public string, get the name of the variable type of pet. 
and I'm just returning that value type of part. Finally, we have get age. Now notice age is an int, so I need to do public int. And again, we use get, the variable name, get age, and just return to that value. Be careful in calls to your accessor methods. So in the main method, I might try to run this, or in the pet tester method, I might try to execute this main method. So we're in the pet tester class, we're going to execute this main method. I make an instance of pet called p, and I use the overloaded constructor to set the name, the type of pet, and the age. And now I call on the three accessor methods. And when I, ex when I execute it, guess what? Nothing happened. Returning a value is not the same as printing a value. You must print the returned values. So instead of just calling p.getName, I need to do system.out.print or printLine p.getName. Same thing for each of those accessor calls. So now when I run this, I'm going to get the name Abu, Abu is a cat, and Abu is 14 years old. So, what should we take away? Well, hopefully you can define behaviors of an object through non-void methods without parameters written in a class. Some things you should know, an accessor method allows other objects to obtain the value of instance variables or static methods. A non-void method returns a single value. Its header includes the return type in place of void. And a return expression compatible with the return type is evaluated, and a copy of that value is returned. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense to you guys. Again, we're using getters to pull information out, and we're going to use the return keyword to, to be able to get that information. And then remember that, like she mentioned in the video, that you can't just use the get in these examples by themselves because they won't display anything. If you want to actually see that output, you will have to incorporate it as part of a print command. Okay, so um, moving back to 5.4 on RuneStone, I'd like you to go through and you're going to take a look at this, but I think by watching that video first, hopefully it will make what's on this page make a little more sense to you. You can see the syntax of how we set these up. Um, talks about some common errors. Talks a little bit about using the main method. Now this is a little bit different. Um, when you when you work with um, what's in the active code window, it does give you a little note that the active code window has two classes. So we've got one class, which is our main method that's going to be in a tester or a driver class. Okay, so remember that in Java, when we deal with different classes, typically we store them in different files. So just kind of keep that in mind um, and read through that as well. Okay, um, what 5.4 is also going to get to is something that we refer to as two string. And we've seen that, I believe, if I remember correctly, we saw that in one of our previous units. And that's where we're going to take instance variables of an object and we're going to return it as a string. Okay, um, so if you want to follow through the activities here and then see where you can get with the class, uh, the programming challenge that goes on there uh, dealing with pets, where we have different instance variables that we're going to create. Okay, and then there's a little bit of summary and some AP questions at the bottom. So that's what I would like you to um, finish for today. And when we get together on Monday, we're going to review accessor member me accessor methods just a little bit before we move on to the next section. So have a good weekend, you guys.